lucky day! There were quite a lot of stunts in this little film. Uh, we didn't really initially appreciate exactly what counted or constituted as a stunt until making this film, but there was one particular stunt, which we always thought was the stunt, uh, which was of course when the uh, character Ricky Pickett is hit, hit clean off his push bike in motion. And um, yeah, what do you remember from that evening? The a build up of anticipation, the excitement. I think it, there was a little air of caution uh, amongst everybody about uh, how it might go. Um, we gave ourselves the whole night to do that stunt though, didn't we? Uh, the whole scene, yeah. Whole so there was the stunt and then oh, obviously the, the scene. The scrap bit. Which yeah. Um, which is nice. It's nice when we have basically one scene on the uh, agenda for the, the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was definitely a, a complicated thing to capture. We had two cameras that night to capture the stunt because um, I, I, I guess we didn't really know how many times we might be able to do it. Was that the only day we had two cameras? Only day we had two cameras and the stunt had to be performed with a mat initially. So when he gets yeah. knocked off the bike, falls onto a mat that was placed by that stunt team. Yeah. Um, and we basically only had one shot at doing the stunt without the mat because it was pretty pretty brutal. It was kind of gnarly. Our amazing stunt team that night. Uh, the, the stunt performer had done several big movies. I was a bit surprised to hear how gnarly it was in relation to like the scale of the projects that they'd been on because they were like, yeah, you're, we, this is quite dodgy and like we're only, we're only really prepared to do it for real onto concrete once because it's actually more dangerous than you might think. Yeah, it looks dangerous. It looks dangerous. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, the guy's been like thrown off buildings and into walls and mm. stuff. So I was thinking, oh, this is probably a cakewalk. But yeah. um, no, they were like, no, this is pretty serious, actually. <laughs> he really wanted to wear a helmet and he had this tiny little one, didn't he, that went there. Got and it. it was just lucky that Ricky's character was wearing a hoodie, like under his jacket. Yeah. And they were able to kind of work that in. But that's yeah. the only time in the whole kind of story where he has his hood up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that worked Makes out sense, really well. Isn't it? It's cold out. <laughs> He's riding his bike at night. So they basically uh, attached a, a, a rope to a, um, a bungee cord, to a four by four, so that it was just out of frame. Um, so then, bar, right? as yeah, as as the bike gets to the mark where he gets hit off, obviously then the rope uh, tensions and pulls yeah, him back off it. Um, um, taut. 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 We only had one take without the mat. Yeah. So the idea was to remove the mat later. Um, yeah. And I think you you definitely, yeah, you chose the one with the mat. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be honest, the one without the mat was, was really good, but it came with like a couple of, some minor issues. Like, so the one where he came off the mat, like he had a really nice kind of, he rolled, which was nice, but it didn't match to the following shot where Ricky was like flat on his back. So I thought that would be a bit of a tricky cut. And then also like the one where he comes off naturally, the bike doesn't go off in a straight line very well. It kind of veered towards the camera. Yeah. Um, so it, it didn't quite line up with the following shots. But to be honest, the real reason I liked the one where he landed on the mat was because it was, it was very kind of comical and quite cinematic. Like he literally, his legs like, like <laughs> kind of, he kind of headbutts his own genitals. And it's, it's, it's I thought like, it was very disa funny. So disarming, isn't it? Like <laughs> the way he falls, it's like <laughs> pathetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Whereas the one where he landed on concrete was probably slightly more like visceral and violent, but it, yeah, it was really close. And I remember you, you actually had a fair few VFX shots on your plate and you mm. were sort of looking at me like, Will, you need to, you need to decide which one you want. And you know, I'd really appreciate it if you picked the concrete one. And I was like, I've had a okay. think and uh, we're going with the map. <laughs> uh, how, how was painting all, all that stuff out? Uh, I, I think it was okay in the end. I think the, 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 the main problem was the shadow really. It was like easy enough to get him separated out of that plate, uh, but then uh, the the shadow of his like contact with the ground had to be completely rebuilt. I think it was a combination of like taking his cut out and then flipping it and making that like a black shadow basically, like a black solid. And then it was like various warps like to try and get 
so it wasn't like a clear like obvious shadow outline you know how like a shadow feathers out yeah so as 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 the arm gets closer to the to the to the ground the the shadow becomes more defined and the further away it is from the ground the, the softer it spreads so it was a lot of like figuring out that so like as his arm comes down it's not just a, a crisp shadow that meets it it's more like it it's crisp here and then goes soft and all that stuff. Another thing that you had to do by yourself <laughs> on the lemon, the yeah, yeah. visual effects of the fence, the hidden, the hidden visual yeah, effects. A lot of fence. hidden stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, it never, never really called for anything else, really. It was always going to be our only way of really fixing issues with period accuracy and stuff. It was always going to be satellite dishes or PVC windows or something in shot that was going to ruin it. Speaking of windows, that night we did the stunt, there are a num we had an issue with windows where that area is uh, recently, is up for demolition, so it's kind of been closed off for construction. That meant that they had put metal shutters on a lot of the windows, and it cost like a couple hundred quid or whatever for each window to be removed. Huge, yeah. So we had to carefully choose which ones we wanted yeah. <laughs> without really ever knowing exactly how we were gonna do it. What else was there that was massively inconvenient that day that almost caused massive concern? Do you not remember the 20 foot blue container that had to be removed? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, um, what was it, like a few, a week before, a couple of weeks before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they there's the blue, a massive blue shipping container, massive, huge, Thing just like appeared, appeared in the middle of, in the middle of where exactly where it was going to happen, <laughs> and we didn't know what to do. And luckily, the locations team worked their butts off to like communicate with the uh, like the company, the the company. The, that was I have building. no idea what they did, but they managed to get someone to turn up with a big truck. But this was on the night, on the day. We were yeah, we yeah. were <laughs> we were putting lights up. You know, it was still. What, like a few hours before it's sun. sundown yeah, and, yeah. and this blue thing was still there. And we kept looking at Mark like, Mark, 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 it's going to be gone, Mark. It's going <laughs> to be gone. And Mark was going, trust me, trust me, lads, it's going to be gone. It's not yeah, going to be there. Yeah. It's going to be gone. It's going to be fine. And we were like, I, I, I was thinking, trying to think of like backup locations where, or like, <laughs> because it was bright blue, I was like, do you think you can paint it out? <laughs> it's a perfect chroma key turn, wasn't it? I mean, it was asking for it. Be painting out. <laughs> or it was like, is there a way could we have like Steve lent against it? It was getting pretty desperate, but mm. thankfully the our brilliant production management team were able to move it at the eleventh hour in the nick of time. The choice of shot. The choice of shot. Why do we why did we go for those two? We got sort of three shots out of it in the end. Like you said, we had one, we had the main shot which was low, slightly angled, but you yeah. can see the whole thing. Yeah. One shot at the back, which we started off wide and static, but later on we switched it to handheld and got a couple couple shots of him falling backwards and it was much tighter. And, There's some yeah. stuff in the trailer that came out of that quite nicely. Yes. And he's, it's, it's all a little bit more chaotic and you don't quite you can't wait to see the context of it. But with Andy like clotheslining him, and he's like really tight. We didn't want to use it in the trailer, did we? We weren't sure that we wanted to give it up, did we? No, like the big reveal shot of it, no. So that, that fitted in quite nicely there. So, you know, it, the, a lot of those things, I mean, like, I know it's just in the trailer, but it's another part of the project. Bits of footage that didn't make it into the film are still useful. Talk about your lighting. Obviously, with it being a night shoot, there was a lot of lighting that needed to happen because we knew exactly where the scene would take place. And basically, for the whole film, we weren't going to do any moonlight. Um, it was all going to be sort of urbanly lit by what you would find out in the streets of Bristol at the time. So it was going to be a lot of sodium vapour lighting basically. And the sequence where she falls off the bike kind of happens in the middle of this car parking area where there isn't, there's two lamp posts either side of it. Um, so there's some motivation to light from either side like that. So we had our own lights put up on the lampposts that are like spilling onto the floor. So they were all use a cherry picker to get all the lights up, rigged to the lampposts, shooting down, to have like these kind of sodium vapor, orange pools of light. But like the main action in the middle, it's kind of like scratching my head about how we might light that in a way that we're not having to move too much stuff around and give lots of space for the stunt to happen. 
Um, so we used a frame that we rigged to our cherry picker and boom that over the set and bounce some lights off that. So you just got this wash coming down and it, it does have some motivation with, with your street lights either side, but like really there is no light up there. We've just put it there, um, but for purely for dramatic effect. And that really, that edges Andy out um, from the background and just plays throughout that entire scene. And we hardly moved, we maybe moved it around a tiny bit, but basically that just stayed where it was. And then just able to just do the scene and then bring other bits, little lights in whenever we needed it. But um, most of the time it was just lit from above. And yeah, I, I think that, that uh, I think it worked. Yeah, I mean, it was like you said, it, it, maybe the top down one lacked a little bit of motivation, but the whole movie is supposed to be slightly over the top, isn't yeah. it? Like we always talked yeah, about yeah. the lighting being, um, but the whole movie is not that realistic. Like it's an exaggerated version of reality. So you can, I said that you, you'd, be ha you'd be fine getting away with like exaggerated lighting. I think that's your kind of, that's your that's kind some, of style. That's some fun, isn't it? Like, yeah, we, yeah. we weren't out to uh, be like, the realists and all that stuff like it's supposed to be a fun upbeat movie and um, you know even when people are getting smashed up it's still supposed to be quite um, exaggerated yeah so I think it went really well it's nice to work with urban lighting as well I think maybe in a more modern setting you could get away with different colors a bit easier just because there are more um, variety of lights now so it would be some cooler colors and things like colder colors and some green colors and things we managed to scatter a few other colors in the background and tweak things and you know vary it a little bit and hide lights behind buildings and trees and stuff like that but all that had to be done in daylight so we had to plan exactly where we we're going to put all the lights before then um, before it went dark i kind of hope they worked out Kind of, yeah. <laughs> no second go in. No, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Although, funny enough, we did actually miss a shot at the end, yeah, which was the one pushing in on Dave, which we had to come back and quickly, quickly yeah, grab yeah. it before the night began the following day. Uh, there was because there was a, a number of shots that were planned for the hit off the bike yeah. that we ran out of time to get and they, they didn't quite come off the way we wanted them to come off. We ended up putting um, we ended up putting Lee on, on the dolly and having it as if he was like riding and the camera was in his face it's, and it's, 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 it looks ridiculous. It was in the one of the early cuts and yeah. um, I, I always kind of wanted a, like a POV where the camera swings and you would have seen Eugene like, well, uh, Andy coming in and like taking them out. Yeah. But we just couldn't really get it, couldn't really get it to line up. And then luckily kind of just managed to save it in the edit a bit. Like you just had the right, right, you just had the right amount of whatever was required in the shot to just sell it as like, he goes out of frame, suddenly he's disappeared and then whack, like he's, he's down, he's off yeah. and, it, and it just about worked. But yeah. I remember that shot of Dave, we really wanted that one. And um, quite a lot of pressure on Cammy to like get that right um, because it was a really it. long lens. What was it? Was it 125 or 75? I think it was 100 mil. Okay, yeah. And it was like wide open more or yeah. less. Yeah, because I don't think, I'm not sure we had our 13. We did have a 135 a bit later in the shoot, yeah. but the, I think it might've been 100 mil and it was wide open as well. Shout out to Cammy, Camilla for getting that one sharp. Uh, we were lucky enough to get a little wet down as well shortly after that. Yeah, I remember for when we did the wide shot, uh, it was dry at that point, and uh, and I was like, oh, it'd be great if, <laughs> if it was just really small. wet on the floor. That would look great right now. Because a wet a wet down is where it rains and uh, everything gets nice and shiny, and in film that looks really cool oh, when you start getting the light and stuff. Reflection. Yeah, and that did happen in between after we did that um, yeah. wide. So then all the other stuff with leaves on the on the deck. Um, all that that's got a nice sheen to the to the um, concrete. So that's the stunt. That's St came, came off, came off all right. It did come off. Hopefully, right. that's given you a bit of an insight into the well, yeah, behind the scenes of how it was done and what went into it, and it wasn't just it's never as simple as you think. Yeah. yeah. Great. Cool. <laughs>
Thank you for watching this video. We are hopefully going to be putting these out on a fairly regular basis, so do keep an eye out on the socials. Please do consider buying or renting the film. You can find out all the information you need on the fencefilm.co.uk. Action! Rinas, you okay? I'm good! Alright, <laughs> okay. I wouldn't believe that. I wouldn't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>